So what is going on everyone, Fernando Silva here with another video and today we got a product that I really wanted to go over because I've been on the hunt and I'm always looking for the best USB-C hub or docking station possible for both the iPad Pro and now the M1 MacBook Air. So I got my hands on this 15-in-1 USB-C dock by Lyar, right? And it's a brand that I found on Amazon. The hub is actually $100, which is pretty on par with a lot of the more expensive ones because you can go anywhere from like 50 to $200 depending on how quality and how many ports you want for these USB-C hubs. So today we're gonna go over the Lyar 15-in-1 USB-C dock and see if it's a good choice for an iPad user or a MacBook user, depending on what you guys use. But let's get right into it. So real quick, in the box, you literally just get the USB-C hub itself, so the Lyar device, and then you get this cool cable, which is a dual USB-C cable on each end. So you guys will be able to see that on one end, it plugs directly into both USB-C cables, depending if you have a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro. And then also there's another two-prong USB-C that goes to the back of the actual Lyar device. So I thought that was pretty cool. I've never actually seen a cable like that, so it probably just needs to draw as much power as possible, and that's why it's doubled up like that. After the unboxing, the device is actually really pretty, right? It's a really nice device, it's very quality, it doesn't have a ton of weight to it. So if you have a lot of cables on there, a lot of hefty cables that move around, it might move the device around depending on where you have it and how much is plugged into it. But it still is pretty sturdy, it's just not super heavy. Because in terms of quality, it is made out of aluminum, it fits that Apple aesthetic which everybody likes. And so far, I've been liking the, the quality and like the confidence that I have with a USB-C hub like this. Because if you go with cheaper USB-C hubs or docks, most of the time, you know, they're, they lack quality, uh, they don't really connect as well, they're not, again, you don't have the confidence that you would with maybe a more expensive, more well-known brand when it comes to these USB-C hubs. So let's talk about the actual ports that are on the hub itself. So on the front, you have two 3.0 USB-A cables, you have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and then also a USB-C port to plug any peripheral that you would want in. And then each one of those plugs in the front are capable of 20 watt charging. So if you want to charge your iPhone and fast charge that and plug it in, by all means go for it. If you have, you know, one of those MagSafe charges you want to plug into there, that will also work. So just keep that in mind, the front three are all 20 watt capable. And now let's go to the rear of the device. Because remember, there's 15 different ports on this guy, which is, I think so far is the most I've had. I think I had one before that was actually 16, but some of them weren't even usable, but I digress. But on the back, you have, from going from top to bottom, you actually have an additional four USB-A ports. The top two are 2.0, so they're very slow transfer speeds. They're just there to maybe have a Bluetooth mouse or a Bluetooth keyboard dongle, something along those lines. And then there's two more 3.0 USB-A ports on the back, right underneath the other ones. And again, for more, for faster data transfer speeds, for faster charging, things along those lines. And then if you continue below those USB-A ports, you have a VGA port, which is something that not a lot, not a lot of USB-C hubs have anymore because VGA is a little bit outdated, but you do get 1080p 60 hertz with that VGA port. So keep that in mind if you are using a VGA capable monitor. And then underneath that, there's actually two HDMI ports. And if you plug one of them in, you get 4K up to 60 hertz. And if you use both of the HDMI ports, then you get 4K 30 hertz. But here's the one thing that you guys wanna keep in mind. So with the M1 MacBooks, the M1 Max, right now, unless you go through a bunch of display links and different dongles and it gets very expensive, you actually cannot do dual monitor support. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about this dock. Like if you're trying to get a dock purely for, two mon for dual monitor support and you're on an M1 machine, then it will not work. It will not work. So do not get this thinking it's gonna be the end all be all and allow you to have two monitor or dual monitor support with your M1 MacBook because it won't work. It just won't display the second monitor. So as of right now, I'm using it the same exact way I was using my last hub. I have my MacBook Air directly plugged in to the actual USB-C hub. The hub has another USB-C port that's plugged into power to give it extra juice. And then I have the one HDMI plug going from the dock into the actual monitor itself. So again, keep in mind, that's a big caveat. And, and then ideally, whenever Apple releases an M1X or an M2, we'll get that dual monitor support. And then this ideally will work with that. Then underneath the actual HDMI cables, you get that dual USB-C port, which that goes from the USB-C dock directly into your Apple computer, depending on which one you have. And again, you need to have at least a 2015 or newer MacBook Pro or MacBook Air because that's when they brought in the USB-C ports and they were kind of side by side. So again, if you have a MacBook Pro, then you'll have even more room to play with because you'll have an extra two USB-C ports, at least with the Intel versions. And then underneath the dual port USB-C, you actually have a you actually have one more USB-C port and that's the one that you need to plug into power. And that actually supports up to 100 watt 
charging. So if you have a 100 watt brick, so if you're using a MacBook Pro, a 16 inch MacBook Pro, and you still have that 100 watt brick, by all means, use that brick to plug into your dock, and then that dock will be powerful enough to charge anything and display anything and pretty much use anything you want. Right now, I have it actually plugged into a 65 watt charger, which for right now is more than plenty. And then finally, you do have a physical ethernet port that you can physically plug into the internet if that's something that you guys wanna get into, and that, and that supports gigabit ethernet connection, which is also nice, right? So you have that, that peace of mind that, hey, if you wanna plug in directly, you have that option. So overall, it's been really good. I've had it for about a week and I've been playing around with it, seeing if there's any issues with it. So far, I haven't found any. And for hundred bucks, it's hard to complain with 15 ports, something that's made of quality aluminum, fits the Apple aesthetic. I haven't really found the perfect spot to put it quite yet. And I, I think that's because I just need to kind of rearrange my desk. Right now, it's just kind of off to the side. But I'm thinking about getting like a, a Visa arm or a Vesa arm, however you pronounce it. So I don't need to use that stand anymore. And then I'll have a lot more freedom. But at the same time, you can even put this underneath a desk. You can put this to the side, you can mount it to a wall, you can mount it behind a monitor. So there's a lot of flexibility when it comes to these hubs. And I like the fact that it's lighter allows me to maybe put a couple 3M stickies on it and just stick it underneath my desk. Because some of the other hubs that are made out of like, I don't even know what they're made out of, but they're very, very heavy. Those won't really hang on with uh, the little 3M stickies. But overall, it's been a fantastic device. And like I said, for hundred bucks, it's hard to complain. It'll, I'm gonna link the USB-C hub in the description below. Let me know your guys' thoughts. What USB-C hub do you guys currently use? Do you need one? Are you guys still rocking Intel base Max? Are you guys all iPad Pro? Are you guys using M1 machines? Let me know in the comments below because I'm curious to know exactly what you guys are using. I'm hoping Apple at some point releases a new SOC for the M1 chips or the M M1X or the M2s to allow multi-monitor support without having to go through a bunch of different dongles because I saw that Linus Tech Tips actually has a way to bypass that. But again, it's very expensive. It's very inefficient. You have to buy a bunch of dual link things and. I'm just not about that and so far my 29 inch monitor has been perfect but overall like I said I've been really enjoying this device I'm gonna keep it on my desk for a while be on the lookout for a like one month follow-up review to see how it's been lasting because overall I really really do like it fits the aesthetic that I like fits on the desk very quality and has all the ports you would ever need including a headphone jack which is very very nice to have again but that's gonna do it for this video don't forget to like comment subscribe hopefully everybody enjoyed and until next time peace